Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be exploring the idea of destroying our planet Earth. We're going to find out what it would take to actually destroy our beautiful planet, and how much energy you actually need, and most importantly, if there is actually anything in our solar system that can do it. Let's learn this using science, and welcome to What The Math. Alright, normally we finish a video by destroying our planet Earth, but this time we actually started with a destruction of our beautiful planet. Now, let's go back in time a little bit and let's go into our own solar system and talk a little bit about the science of destruction of planets. This is actually a pretty simple concept and um, it's been explored before by many other YouTubers, but most importantly, uh, the idea here is that in order for you to destroy the planet, or to basically make the planet sort of fall apart, you need to overcome the energy it's, uh, it's cur that's currently holding the planet together. In other words, you need to overcome the gravitational energy of, a, of an almost perfect sphere. The total energy that's holding our planet Earth together is also known as gravitational binding energy, and it's approximately, well, this is very rough, but it's about two times 10 to the power of 32 joules. It's a lot of energy, but if you were to create a weapon or something that would basically overcome this energy, or that would be a little bit more than the uh, energy I just mentioned, you would be able to essentially do this. That's right, you would be able to explode our beautiful planet. Now, uh, obviously, the first thing that comes to mind when you see exploding planets, so let's actually do this again is of course the scene, the infamous scene from Star Wars when the Death Star destroys the planet. Uh, Scott Manley actually did a really cool interpretation and, uh, and analysis of this uh, using the energy required to destroy a planet. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at an actual object that might collide with our planet Earth and cause it to essentially disintegrate and destroy. So in other words, a question we're trying to answer is, is there any other object, specifically like a planet or most likely an asteroid, that can actually collide with our planet and destroy it completely? So let's discover by going into a new simulation. And first of all, you need to understand that the, our planet Earth is actually built to last. It's uh, 4.5 billion years old. It's about six, followed by 21 zeros tons of iron on the inside. So it's a very sturdy object. It's very, very difficult to destroy this. Many asteroids tried, even planetary objects tried and failed. The closest we ever came to being destroyed was when an, a Mars-like object by the name of Theia collided with our planet Earth and then resulted in the creation of the moon. So the collision that basically vaporized the surface of our planet, then created Earth and the Moon. That happened about uh, 4.5 billion years ago. Now, is there anything out there today, specifically we're, we're looking at asteroids that can actually potentially approach our planet Earth relatively close, that could do the same. First of all, let's look at the math behind this. So in order for us to destroy our planet, we need to basically overcome the energy that's keeping our planet together. And most of this energy is gravitational. There's uh, some other things like tensile strength, for example, that is not gravitational, but it's relatively neg negligible, so we're going to ignore it. Um, one thing that we can't really ignore is the fact that the center of our, of our planet is actually metallic and very, very, very dense. So it's actually going to be even more difficult to destroy because of this. So you could actually hypothetically destroy the outer shell, but the inner shell will still remain as a planetary object. So for this reason, we might need to actually add a little bit more energy to our original estimate. So you need approximately three times 10 to the power of 32 joules of energy to break the earth up into essentially small pieces. And these small pieces will probably remain in the same orbit and create a new asteroid belt. Now, any object orbiting the sun, like an asteroid, for example, let's actually go back to the solar system for a second. So any of these asteroids right here, like Ceres, Vesta, or anything else larger, um, would be most likely moving at a speed of about 40 kilometers per second if they were to approach our planet Earth. So uh, the biggest asteroid here is Ceres. This is technically actually a dwarf planet, 
and we can actually uh, change its orbital parameters to intersect with our planet Earth by doing the following. By changing both its semi-major axes and its eccentricity, basically dislodging it from its previous orbit to now orbit uh, in an orbit where it actually is going to intersect Earth. So right when it intersects Earth's orbit, it's going to be going at a velocity of approximately 37.5 kilometers per second. Now, this is probably the fastest asteroids ever get in this region. There are some objects that are actually, um, that can collide with our planet faster, specifically uh, remains of comets can actually collide with up to 72 kilometers per second. But that's, those are really, really small. Com cometary objects, or cometary remains are tiny, tiny particles. They would never be large asteroids like Ceres. If we were to do the same with some of the larger dwarf planets, like for example, if we were to somehow dislodge Pluto and send it on an intersection with our planet Earth. And right now I'm trying to basically modify its orbit so it actually intersects with our planet. It needs to align with that blue line right there. Uh, I guess that's close enough. So, eh, never mind, that's actually a little bit too far out. So let's let's make it more realistic. Let's assume that Pluto uh, collides with something and basically then uh, goes on a collision course with our planet Earth. So there we go. There's that orbit, eccentricity of 0.97. Looks relatively realistic. This is assuming that Pluto collides with something and is now going to be moving closer to Earth. And so we're going to wait for it to make it to Earth's orbit and then take a look at the velocity that it has when it intersects with the planetary path of our planet. So here it comes and we're going to pause the game right here just to see what the speed is. Oh, look at that. It actually even came very close to Earth. So let's maybe move a little bit closer right here. Okay, perfect. Almost perfect. Here we go. All right, so at this location, Pluto, which is basically the most massive dwarf planet we have, uh, or I guess you could call it the closest to an asteroid collision that we could ever experience, is going to be moving at the velocity of 41 kilometers per second. And it's actually turning into comet because it's approaching sun too close, and so the sun is affecting it and is uh, basically making all of the ices on its surface evaporate into space. So we now have turned Pluto into a cometary object. But anyway, so yeah, 41 kilometers per second, that's probably the highest we'll have. So, how much energy would this produce? Well, let's actually just collide an object at this velocity with Earth and see what happens. So we're going to take Pluto, which is actually uh, close to about, I guess, 30 or 20, 20 something times more massive than uh, Ceres or uh, pretty much any other dwarf planet. So we're going to take Pluto and we're going to launch it at the velocity of 41 kilometers per second toward our planet Earth and see if our planet gets eliminated, if it gets destroyed completely. So here we go. We're going to aim at the center and decrease time just a little bit and observe the collision from close by here. Here we go, three, two, one, boom. All right, very large explosion, a lot of a lot of energy released, but for the most part, our planet is still kind of in one piece. And this is actually the reality of the situation. Yeah, it would definitely cause a tremendous collision, probably destroy all of the life on the surface, but it would not destroy our planet. It would not actually overcome the so-called gravitational binding energy. The energy produced here is not nearly enough to, to do that. And what's even more interesting is that there's actually a pretty easy way of calculating how much mass you need to have in order for you to destroy a planetary object. And so how do we actually calculate how much mass you need to destroy a spherical object like this? So for a spherical mass of, of relative uniform density, the gravitational binding energy um, U is given by the formula 3 uh, capital G capital M squared divided by 5 uh, R. G is the gravitational constant, big M is the mass of the sphere, and R is the radius. And so, in short, for you to destroy this planet, um, you need to collide it with another object about three-fifths of its actual mass. So you would need to collide Venus with Earth for us to destroy Earth. So let me, let me just show you what, what I mean by this. 
So if an object is only about the mass of Mars, which is uh, about one tenth of mass of Earth, it would still not destroy Earth. But if we collide Earth with Venus at a velocity of about, let's just say, 11 kilometers per second, which is the escape velocity on our planet Earth, in this case, it would very likely cause our planets to basically be completely eliminated and essentially destroyed into nothingness. So three-fifths of the mass at the escape velocity. But remember, energy increases dramatically with speed because it's actually mv squared. So if, if an object was moving at a velocity of 40 kilometers per second, it can actually be a lot smaller. So in this case, if we were to take moon, uh, our own moon, and if we were to collide it with our planet Earth, at the velocity of about 50 kilometers per second, or maybe I guess 60 is a little bit more closer, it would very likely have enough energy to do the same. So uh, obviously it's not very realistic for our moon to move that fast, but if it did move this fast toward our planet Earth, collided with it, it would very likely cause the complete destruction of our planet as well. So, in this case, if we go back to the example of Pluto, which is about one-sixth of the mass of the moon, we could technically be able, we could, we could technically destroy our planet Earth. So, how do we do this? If somehow Pluto gets dislodged and moves in the opposite direction of our Earth's orbit, so right now Earth is moving at the velocity of about uh, 30 kilometers per second. If Pluto approaches from the other side at 40 kilometers per second, or 41 kilometers per second as before, the total velocity here, the total head-on collision here, would be about 71-ish kilometers per second. And if you do the math, it's kind of close to what you need to basically completely overcome the gravitational binding energy. In other words, if somehow Pluto gets dislodged and starts moving in the opposite direction to everything else in our solar system, and then somehow accidentally basically collides with our planet Earth head on, it's very likely going to overcome the gravitational binding energy and it's very likely going to destroy it completely. And here we go. We're going to decelerate time just a little bit and there is that destruction of our planet Earth by collision with Pluto at 71-ish kilometers per second. So, yeah, this scenario is not super realistic because, you know, to dislodge Pluto and to make it orbit in a completely different direction, something absolutely dramatic needs to happen. Also, for Venus to approach our planet and destroy it as well, something dramatic needs to happen once again. Mars does not have enough energy unless it moves really, really fast, and uh, gas giants will probably not be able to destroy it either. Okay, yeah, they can destroy our planet Earth, but they would not be uh, as easily dislodged because of their tremendous mass. So what this kind of tells us is that it's very difficult for planets to be destroyed. Even a head-on collision with an object requires a very, very high speed for it to actually be destroyed. This speed I had here, 71 kilometers per second, that's very hypothetical and that's assuming many many things uh so for example changing an orbit of pluto to to make it orbit in a completely different direction essentially means reversing its path completely which by itself requires a tremendous amount of energy as well and then moving it close to earth on the intersection would also require a huge amount of energy as well which is kind of unrealistic but all in all though what this suggests is that yeah, you could technically destroy planet Earth by colliding it with an object that's moving fast enough. And what's even more interesting is that a simple asteroid could also destroy a planet Earth assuming it moves at about 90% of the speed of light. Due to the way that the energy increases exponentially with speed, this asteroid right here, if it collides with a planet Earth, even though it's much, much smaller than any of the objects we've collided with Earth previously, is going to create so much energy that our entire planet is going to be eliminated completely. So this is what we actually call a relativistic kill vehicle or a relativistic kill weapon. And this is a hypothetical weapon existing in science fiction where basically you launch something close to the speed of light and that object can completely destroy a planet. And anyway, 
Hopefully you learned something from this video and you enjoyed watching it. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who loves learning about science and space and wants to learn more through video games. And come back here tomorrow to learn something else, something interesting, something you didn't know before. Also consider supporting this channel Patreon to help me improve the quality of these videos and to continue doing this for years to come. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.